the US presidential elections are around the corner. A lot of people are worried that they might be rigged. Is it true? Could it be true? Well, I'm sorry to say, but yes, they are rigged and I'm gonna prove it to you right now. So I'm not gonna talk about either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump as people or as candidates or even their policies. I'm just gonna show you the process and why America is not a democracy and I'm sorry to say, but you are completely fooling yourselves. So first off, when I had to explain to my friends in Europe this graph here, that Clinton had a 66% chance of winning in June, and then it went to 80%, and then down to practically 50-50, and then 87% again, and then 58. People are asking me, how is this possible? The popular vote swings so much. People are changing their opinion wildly. Well, in fact, that's not the case. The popular vote has varied at maximum six points, and most of the time it stayed pretty much flat. So what's going on here? Well, as Americans, you might know something a little bit about the Electoral College, which is what really matters. And these are delegates and superdelegates. So these are not the people. In Europe and in functioning democracies, we're used to have one head, one vote. But in the United States, this is not the case. Also, the fact that you vote on a Tuesday, which is completely insane, <laughs> it should be on a public holiday so more people can go out to vote. Another problem with the system is the so-called swing states. So when I had to explain this to my friends here in Europe, they were like, what are, what are swing states? Well, because of the Electoral College, the candidates will spend most of their time campaigning on tiny little states that are in between because they're undecided, so that their entire electoral votes will shift one way or the other instead of working for the entire population and therefore campaigning throughout the entire country in a more or less equally distributed way. So that's the first reason why the system isn't democratic. But before we even get to the candidates, how come Hillary Clinton became the nominee for Democratic Party? So a leak of emails suggests that maybe the Democratic National Convention wasn't as fair as it should have been and Bernie Sanders might have been the one to actually receive the ticket for the Democratic Party. But that shouldn't come really as a surprise because before that, Lawrence Lessig, a professor of law at Harvard University, found out the hard way that if you talk about the real issues and the big problems in America, so the structural problem in this case, he was talking about campaign financing, Lawrence Lessig was campaigning and it seemed like he was going to have more than 1% in the polls. So he should have been included in the debate. But then guess what? The Democrats didn't like that. So they changed the rules to essentially force him out. But even the ones who have voted were actually a small fraction of the population. Only 9% of America chose Trump or Clinton as the nominees. How is it possible, you say? Well, just have a look at this. In the United States, there are 324 million people. Now, these are children, non-citizens, ineligible felons, and so they don't have the right to vote. Uh, 88 million people are adults, but they don't vote in the general election. And then 73 million people decided not to vote in these primaries. And out of the remaining, only these ones are actually voting for either Trump or Clinton. The others voted for other party candidates. So this is only 9% of the population. The vast majority of the eligible voters didn't choose Trump or Clinton. This is not how a democracy should work. Now, one of the big problems that you might notice here is that a lot of people are not voting. Why are they not voting, you say? Well, in most advanced countries, people go out and vote quite a lot. In Malta, 94%. In Italy, 90%. Belgium and Chile, that's compulsory to vote there, but 93%. But even countries where it's not compulsory, like Iceland, 89% of the people go out and vote. What about the United States? Well, let's scroll down a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Ah. You're lucky if half the population goes out to vote in the US. And even if you vote, very few will decide who actually gets the ticket. And even if you do, the people who are allowed in the debates of the ticket can't really talk about the issues if they disagree with the establishment. And when someone really gets a lot of support and can challenge the establishment, they find a way to push him out. And in the end, you have shitty candidates that the majority of the people don't want in a system where it's not even guaranteed that the person who gets the most vote will actually win. This is not a democracy. Is the system rigged? Yes, it is. Against Trump or Clinton? No, against the American people and the rest of the world. 
the real loser of this presidential election is democracy.